Are you looking for a faster video? Well, today it's a live stream and I know you're probably looking for a really nice and tidy edited down video, but I have ways for you to make it faster. You can click that little gear on the YouTube settings right there on the video and adjust the playback speed. Make me sound like a chipmunk and it'll go a lot faster. You can also look and see if there's timestamps for this project in the description. And if you're on a desktop, you can hover over the time bar at the bottom of the screen and see if it's chunked up into chapters. And then that way you can go directly to the step you're looking for. And lastly, you can also tap on the screen on the right hand side of the video picture or on the left hand side to make the video jump ahead forward or backward if you're on a mobile device. And you can adjust that amount in your settings so you can have complete control over how much it jumps. So if you are on a desktop, you can use the fast forward or the rewind and that will make it fast go faster as well. You can also enable subtitles and the little CC on the screen will enable closed captioning. That way, if I am a little bit harder to understand with that double playback speed, the subtitles might help you out. All right, well, I know that it's not a nice little edited video, but if you sew with me, we'll get there together and it'll be lots of fun. And now for the live stream. Happy sewing. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. How are you guys? Happy Saturday, or soda day, as some of you call it. <laughs> um, how was the end of your week? How was Friday? Today's my Friday, so tomorrow's my Saturday, which is really confusing sometimes because I sometimes think of it that way. And then I mention it out loud and people are like, wait, what, it's only Saturday? <laughs> and it's their Sunday, so. Uh, I have a few things that I got in the mail and just feel like sharing them because um, maybe they're interesting to you. Um, I ordered this knit interfacing. It's very, very affordable. So it's interfacing for knit and it's three inches wide. Uh, obviously it comes as a ton of it. This is 50 yards, but I think it was $8. Hey Martina. Hey Terry, how's it going? And I got this much, it comes in different increments and I got it at Waywac. Um, pretty sure it was like eight or nine dollars and you can get less. I got this much just because like one yard is like easily per project, right? Easily. So, and if you use it like two or three times in one project, cause I'm thinking neck bands for like that Scirocco jumpsuit or underwear. Like I, I, I think I could easily go through this with underwear cause my favorite style is like a fabric waistband. So I got a bunch of that. I got a couple of separating zippers from them for the child's hoodies that I'm going to be making later this month. The Hyde sweatshirt by five out of four patterns. Hi Delwyn. Hey Beverly. How's it going? And then I also got some draw cord. This was, this was a hard one for me to buy because I don't really want this much of it. You can find less. It was a lot more money. I just was like, oh, this is pretty chunky too. But yeah, this is a cotton draw cord. I was having trouble finding it in black. What was the other problem? It was the only thing I was gonna be ordering from someplace, so I'd be paying for shipping on it. And so then I was just like, all right, now we have to think about this, you know? So, hi, RG, how's it going? Hi, Sarah. Hey, Beverly. Did I say hi to you, Beverly? Yeah, so those are my th three things because what I do, someday I should do a video on how I prep because I think it would be interesting to see <laughs> I got, like all the different things I'm doing at one time. Like I have three different stores open on my screen and I'm shopping at different, you know, fabric stores for notions. <clears throat> I do try and get everything for my projects to make sure so I can just not be stressed all month. Um, obviously you guys have all seen me plenty of times the day of go, I don't have a zipper for this or whatever. So, but you guys love sewing drama. So, you know, there's that. Hey Libby. Hey, yeah. How's it going? Um, but yeah, this was my way of being prepared. I think I'm still missing one thing for one of the projects, but I'm not sure. I can't remember what it is. 
Oh, it might be grommets for this sweatshirt. This sweatshirt, it's gonna be really fast to sew, but if you want it to be really authentic, and you know when you're sewing for a kid, they don't want it to look anything but store-bought, right? So I'm trying to make it look as store-bought as possible. You need uh, grommets, separating zipper, draw cord, um, that's everything, plus your fabric and everything. So that's quite a few things to kind of coordinate sometimes. So, um, and then I got my latest fabric godmother package and you guys really loved me opening this last time. So I'm gonna open it for you guys. Let me put these in their bins. I have each, each project has a, a bin. All right, so it, I am not sponsored by these folks. I barely even have heard of this company. They, someone shared, I think, a picture of some fabric they got there, and I was really like, wow, that fabric is amazing. And they then when I checked them out, they had just posted what their recent subscription box was, because apparently they do one. I don't do a lot of subscription boxes at all. I think I've done, I did Needle Sharp for a year, which was really awesome. Uh, and that's an American one. This is based in the UK. And so I signed up and it's a little, I will say it's a little, it's probably very straightforward if only you're doing only that, but there's two different logins. So I got a little confused. And this auto renews, which I didn't think it did, which is fine with me. I was really pleased. Um, this was, these were the folks I got that Anthea blouse and that beautiful um, floral fabric, which is right here. So the so last month I got tons of this fabric, this beautiful floral fabric. Um, so I just washed it recently, so it's all funky. And then, um, well, it's not really funky, it's just I folded it funky. And then a, a pattern by Anna Allen, I've never sewn something for them. Incidentally, that Anna Allen Anthea blouse is so similar to the Paddington top that I recently made. I literally have a thing to open packages and for some reason, both of them are missing. My one at home is missing and my one here. Hey, Michelle. Hey, Amy. Hey, Angela. Oh, right, it's Labor Day weekend. I get kind of ripped off for things like that because, uh, sorry, I know this is loud. Yeah, I don't usually get three day weekends because I already have Mondays off. <laughs> All right. So it just says dream wardrobe and then this month's August. Oh, gingham. Very nice. Comes in lots of sizes too, usually. Okay, so there's usually a long write-up about the a fabric and suggestions on what you can do with it. And then the pattern. Okay, I don't have this pattern. Oh, and then there's a gift too. Okay, cool. And then the second page is pretty interesting. This is, I must be an employee at the fabric store. I'm not really sure, sorry, I don't know. But it's actually their write-up on, it's almost like reading a blog post, a kind of a candid blog post on like what view they made and you know, like cutting, this dress is very spacious, check the finished gar garment measurements and use these to decide which size to cut. You know, they, they have some very nice little tips in here and then sewing tips as well. Hi, Emmalyn. So let's see what I got. Oh, wow. All right, well, these tiered dresses are super fashionable right now. I would not have bought a tiered dress. <laughs> like, I just don't feel like they'd be very flattering on me. This is very cute, though. Um, the company is Christine Haynes. That's cool. I've never sewn anything by Christine Haynes, so I'm excited about that. I, I like her a lot. Ooh, some fancy pins. That's a nice gift. And then some thread. And it's a lot of fabric. Does it tell me how much fabric it is? So the first box they did that I saw was an actual Liberty of London fabric. And then this last one was this, um, that floral. Um, it doesn't, oh, four meters. 
it's a lot of fat. You get a lot of fabric, but this dress I bet takes a lot. Wow, this pattern is very nice. I have to say, I hate it when the stuff's not on the back. Sorry, Christine, but I do. Some people don't realize how much others sew. <laughs> I don't know, Ray. I love gingham. In fact, my problem with gingham is that I really can't sew it live on camera. I want to see what the um, inside looks like. It's just such a fancy packaging. Some other pictures maybe. So it looks very generous, loose. It's very billowy. Yeah, my problem is that cameras don't really like the game. This seems to be okay. This is a big enough check. I have a bin though of uh, yarn dyed stuff right here. <laughs> and I really, I can't sew any of it on camera. So it's definitely gonna be, I'm thinking about, in fact, I wanna test this. I was thinking about making the Piper boho tunic, but yeah, that's a little busy. Don't you think that's a little busy? I think that might be a little too busy. It'd be closer. It's harder to see the detail. All right, cool. Well, that's my current box. I have this love with black gingham. Like I had this dress that I made when I was probably like, I don't know, 19 years old. <laughs> and um, I used satin ribbon for the straps. It was a little princess seam dress that I drafted myself. And um, it was short, of course. I, I always wear, wore like, not really short, just like, it was like mid thigh. And I had, a, I, I lined it, cause it was super lightweight gingham. Remember when gingham was super lightweight? It was very lightweight. So I lined it and then I put eyelet along the bottom of it and the eyelet hung out. So it was a little like princess seam gingham dress with eyelet hanging out. And then there was something red Maybe I just wore red shoes with it or something. I think that's what it was. And I had white satin ribbon straps. Don't do that. Don't do satin ribbon. That is like destined to fail eventually. But you know, I'd only been sewing for a few years and it seemed like a good idea at the time. And making little thin straps wasn't something I was very good at at the time. So yeah, I know. It's really weird how the cameras react to certain things like that. All right. so. You guys are here because we're making the Auburn blazer. I'm not cutting it out today, but today's the last day that I am doing my last little bit of fit adjustments to my pattern pieces. And then I'm gonna do the thing that nobody ever talks about, which surprises me. Transferring what changes you made to your self pieces, your main fabric pieces, to the pieces that sew to them because you have to do those changes to the lining, the interfacing. And I think it's really good to think about that because you might take a different route fitting something when you realize, oh, right, I have to do this <laughs> to the other pieces. <laughs> and you don't wanna really lose track of your path because then you, you start, you know, not knowing what all the things you need to do. So I'm gonna give you a kind of an easier way to look at it and easier for me too, because I kind of just went dove in and then I was like, oh shoot, I did a small bust adjustment. Now I need to do this to the lining please, especially since I changed the top of it. Like I've changed that side front. It's my, my piece with the most alterations. So you're here for that. Hey Barbara, nice. Yeah, so if you're doing the sew along, it's a very casual sew along. You can sew whatever, blazer, coat, jacket, big project of anything. You can make your dog a coat, I don't care. Um, I am only doing the streams this week, all week long. And starting next Saturday, we're just gonna sew every Saturday. That way, it's something we're gonna chip away at. It's really not hard to sew a blazer, I promise. If you chose the one that I'm doing, I promise it's not gonna be hard. I'm going to guess that the hardest aspects of it are going to be nervousness surrounding the welt pockets. We're gonna be fine. We're gonna be fine with that. It's gonna be no big deal, I promise, okay? 
Um, the other thing is I think you're gonna be, we're, we're gonna be nervous about attaching the lining to the blazer. Again, no problem, it's just one seam. That is all because we're setting ourselves up to, for success right now. And then um, I think the last thing is to interface or not to interface. How authentic do you want to go with your blazer? So those are the things I think like, what do I do, what do I want? And then it's, it, I feel like when we're trying to make those decisions, sometimes we don't realize that part of what's influencing our decision is, oh, that's so many steps. Because <laughs> it does me, I'm just like, oh, shoot, that seems like so much work. <laughs> and really it's because it's like, I don't really know, you know, you're thinking, I really don't know, like, do I need to do that? Do I wanna do that? Why do I wanna do that, you know? So I'm gonna do this as authentic as, as possible. If you want like further instruction or details, or you wanna jump ahead and you're doing the Auburn, Cashmere has an amazing step-by-step -step sew along on their website. You don't even have to wait for me. So there you go. <laughs> you like the blazer pep top? This is how I feel about fly zippers. If you have never sewn a pair of jeans because you're afraid of a fly zipper, I'm telling you, you watch my video or there's countless other people's little steps, like find the person that speaks to you and do it because it's literally just a few short seams. You just, this one, flip, this one, flip, this one, you know, and, and you just need to do those short little seams in that order and it all works out perfectly. You can't try and think about the logic sometimes, especially if you're kind of new to it. it. It gets more and more logical the more you do of them and that's just how it is. So anyway. <laughs> oh, wow, good for you, Sarah. <laughs> Hi, Lynn. <laughs> no, I'm not Ray. Oh, that's right. You were talking about, I'm, that surprised me when you said that you hadn't done a zipper fly because I consider that you've done a lot of different things. There's this huge smudge on my glasses. What else is new? I probably just made it worse. I hate my glasses right now. <laughs> okay, so uh, partway through my fitting journey, I started saving the little pieces that I've been trimming off and just label, labeling them center back shoulder, things like that. Um, this might feel a little overwhelming for folks. They're like, I don't know where this goes or this just feels too inaccurate. It's not though. I mean, like this is how a lot of folks do it. I have two kind of two fit things I need to do. One of them I'm debating on whether to do it or not. Um, and then I'm gonna change, I'm gonna, um, do all the changes to the regular piece, the other pieces that sew to these pieces. So one thing I did to make it a little easier for myself is I printed out the original of the center back here so I can compare, not compare to my change, compare to the lining. So this is the lining piece and this is the center back piece with no changes. So I've been using the tissue pattern from the envelope. I like the tissue because you can see through it, but I understand that it's a pain in the butt to use. I hate using it for that reason. So did you, Barbara? Nice. You found something that you like. I'm excited. Um, and this is just so that you can kind of go, all right, you know, how does this pattern differ from the self to the lining? right? And then you can kind of decide like, okay, you know, what do I need to do to change things? So you could just theoretically take the, your piece with all the changes, because this is my new back, and then make your lining piece based on these differences. So that's one way to do it. And in general, the lining isn't much different. It really isn't. It's gonna be a little shorter because you know the outer fabric you know rolls up and meets the lining, right? Because you don't want your lining hanging below your blazer. And then sometimes there's a little bit of difference surrounding the armhole because you kind of want to make sure that um, when the lining is going into the sleeve, there's enough room. I like to call that the kerf. <laughs> and I know that's not a sewing term, it's a woodworking term, but it kind of makes sense. So. 
Who are you trying to at, Libby? Who are you atting? <laughs> I have my live chat on, right? Yeah, okay. Yeah, what did you get, Barbara? I'm using a canvas, a very simple, loose um, cotton canvas for my outer fabric and a linen. I don't have it here, I have it at home. I'm gonna, re I'm gonna rewash it again. I've had it prepared for months and now I'm like, I'm gonna wash it one more time, so. All right, so my last change I want to do, so my current sample is right here. It's these, um, where's my mouse? Oh, there it is. I want a cuter mouse over here. I never usually care about stuff like that, but where's the full screen and there it is. All right, so. So this is, I have one sleeve. This was the original sleeve from my first prototype. And we made a lot of changes through these princess lines here. And I'd made a lot through the center back and the side back. Now my ish, current issue with this is it actually fits really great. Um, my lengths for some reason changed from the front to the back. So I needed to fix that. My biggest thing is that the side seam is now towards the back of the garment right here. And I'm debating whether I shift it forward or I actually add a half of an inch ease back here to get the side seam towards the front. Mainly because it's still a little close. Like it fits my dress form a little better than it does me. But if I make this change, what'll happen is, if I add a half inch here, what'll happen is that goes through the armhole and I'd have to add it to my sleeve. I'm actually not opposed to that, you know, like I like a little bit fuller sleeve. The sleeve fits me pretty closely and I think it might be a good idea to do that. So that might be my biggest thing I do today. And then I'm gonna fix this little bit I, I let out right here and then I pinched it in down here. So those are the three main things I'm doing and then I'm gonna make all my changes. So we'll just leave this. Be so great to see the, the, um, jacket and actual fabric, it's gonna just make it look 10 times better, just that change alone, you know? Yeah, right, Barbara? I know, I know, I think that is a struggle here. Oh, your keyboard moved and return was where shift should have been. <laughs> That's funny. Some poly cotton wool, something else from Vogue, Vogue Fat Plum. Tweed, ooh, and Bimberg lighting, nice. That's cool, that's cool, that sounds awesome. Yeah, and I think like, that was my thing too, my blazer I keep saying is very spring fabric colors and I'm fine with that, so. All right, so the uh, changes I wanna do here are, I wanna fix this weird little whoop-de-doo right here, so I had to let it out, let's see little bit right here. So I'm just gonna measure down to where I let that out. And it's uh, eight and a half inches. And then I let it out like a full three eighths for seven and three quarters inches. Let me write these things down real quick. Eight and a half. And then seven and three quarters. And we need a piece of paper. There we go, this will work. Oh, that's a great price. Yeah, I think mine was pretty affordable too after um, all was said and done, because remember that store gave, they said, hey, we have this coupon in the uh, paper, and so I was able to use, utilize that. And it, yeah, it's just like a simple cotton canvas. All right, so that's my back. And then I pinched it. I went the other way right here, see? So I'm just gonna measure the length of this, which is six. 
and then I brought it in also three eighths. Almost to that same spot. And if you remember Cashmeret, I used the sizing calculator. So this is my new line right here, which is really interesting, isn't it? Um, the Cashmeret sizing calculator suggested I use a narrower hip. So size 16 for the body and then a 14 for the hip. I have this, I think it's just this like hip tilt I have makes the back kind of, it was kind of like doing this little flare. I, I like having the, a shape, you know, it was just a little too much. Okay, so that's done. So the other thing I did was I fixed this length difference here. And I'll show you how I did that. I did that off camera because I was just kind of curious why that happened. And that was on the side front. I have all my pieces grouped. <laughs> so I cut along the lengthen and shorten line, added my inch, and then blended it in. And so when you do something like this, what I do is I cut along that line, and then I will sometimes go like this. On something like this, it's pretty easy, but on other garments, it can be a little tricky. <clears throat> so pretend this piece is cut off right here. I will put my ruler lining up on like the grain line here. This is a good one, but the grain line doesn't go past here. So pick this center front line here like that. I'll weight this down. And then I have my piece of paper taped to this piece, draw my inch parallel, and I'll put this, line it up with this line here. And then that way I know I haven't shifted it left or right or anything because our tendency would be to kind of line it up with the line here. But what happens is it gets a little bit off. Like you're going to end up shaving a tiny bit because it doesn't get smaller, but you're just moving this point down here. And so I just try and keep it lined up by using my grain line or the center front line thankfully is on there. If your grain line isn't long enough and it's the only straight line on there, just draw it longer. And then that way you can stay true. Like the side front would be a good example, you know, same thing. Uh, yeah, I think so, Lynn. You could, um, <laughs> nice, Libby. It depends on how much you're thinking about doing that. I mean, if your if your jacket are you doing are you the one doing the heather blazer? Because I think that one's pretty straight cut. Yeah, you could do it at the side seam. If you're having any kind of like, if it's feeling a little snug through here, you know, like through your chest, you could slash and spread. And that way you keep all of the, uh, the side seam, armhole, neckline, center front, all the same. Just make sure that you slash and you, you, you swing it out that way. Don't change your center front at all. But yeah, if you're not gonna swing it out much, you can just add it to the side seams. Just make sure also when you do that, you know, you get a nice transition. So if this is your front, this is your front side seam, front hem. This is your back. And then you add, right? When you put these two pieces together, you have to make sure. So let's put, let's overlap them. We'll say the seam allowance is um, an inch which isn't really to scale with these tiny pieces. And you li line these up here. You need to make sure that you're not getting a weird point. You know, like you don't want it to be like this, right? You don't want that little point at the bottom, which can happen sometimes depending on the shape of your side seam. So when you overlap the sides, the, the side seam there at your sewn line, make sure that this line, and you know, you can 
You can prevent it also by making sure that you have, you know, like a right angle here or whatever, and then make sure that this line is smooth transition along your whole hem. If that makes sense. Oh, nice, Lynn. That sounds cute. You did that. Oh, okay. You did a rounded hem. I was thinking about making mine straight, but I can't tell anymore what is dated to me or what isn't. So that rounded edge at the center front of the, the hem of the blazer right here, like in my, in my mind, that looked a little bit old fashioned. So I was gonna straighten it. And then when I thought about doing that, that seemed old fashioned. I don't really know anymore. This is the irony about me is that yes, I went to fashion school. Yes, I did actually very, very well in fashion school. It does not mean I have the best fashion sense. But if you wanna talk about the engineering sizing and construction of something, I'm your gal. <laughs> I'm just not the one that's going to be like knowing, cause I think anything can be in style and something that is in style, I'm like, oh my God, that, nah, -uh. you know, so. <laughs> All right, so let's see, I did those two big changes. Um, what was my other, oh, so the big, the big, uh, those are minor changes. The big change I wanna do is add a half inch to the back. And if you've been following since the beginning, you know how much I've actually taken in the back. It just wasn't in the right spot on me. So I had to take it in back there because of this, I have this weird scoop at my back right here that makes everything like it will pool. All my fabric will pool here and it'll get stuck on my butt. Even if there's enough circumference, it just, it rides up and stick stays there. So I have to kind of carve it out a little bit and you know, leave the hip circumference for the most part. But I feel like I could, my side seam needs to come towards the front a little bit, but I wouldn't mind an extra girth. So this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna add, I so far have not changed this pattern piece at all. Sorry, little guy, your time has come. I need a piece of paper that's kind of long. What is this right here? Yeah, 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 this is okay. Okay, Barbara, that's, that's good to hear. I've never really kept up on, you know, workwear. All right, so now, I, like I said at the beginning, me adding this half inch right here, it's going to affect the armhole circumference and the sleeve. It is a little bit risky that I'm gonna add this half inch and then I'm gonna add it to the sleeve, but it's not that risky. It, if you're doing something bigger than that or doing something a little bit less like, like you don't have all the other puzzle pieces together yet, like it'll be with your fit, I would probably cut and sew another prototype and just make sure that you're not upsetting the apple cart that you've already carefully assembled, you know, because that can happen. All right, so. I'm gonna add a half inch, just parallel to this line. I'm not really changing it. And in fact, um, I didn't print this one out. I wanna make sure I get it about in the same spot. We'll transfer these notches like that. And then we're gonna do it to the sleeve. Oh shoot, that's what happens when you quick and dirty style. All right, and the only other pieces I hadn't changed were my sleeve. And they're even in the bin, because I haven't done anything to them. And I was like, yay, I have a whole pile of pieces. I don't have to change it all. <laughs> but this is gonna affect only the underarm piece. This is the main. And we will do our lining at the same time. 
The other piece that it will affect is your sleeve hems. Are there sleeve hems? Yeah, I knew there were. Are these just interfacing? Nice. I'm gonna put this on my dress form. I'm gonna take the shoulder, no, I'm not gonna take the shoulder pads off quite yet, just in case, you know. Sleeve, sleeve. Okay. All right, so there should be a notch right here on the underarm, and that's where the side seam lines up to the inner sleeve here. So I'm going to draw a line that's parallel to the grain line here at that notch. I'm actually gonna make sure I'm doing it as best I can at the seam line. So what I do is I draw in the seam allowance and then I make a perpendicular line to that notch and that's in general where it's officially at. And then now I'm gonna draw a parallel line to this grain line here. Tissue, man, it doesn't really wanna be straight. It's a little annoying. Maybe I should uh, zoom it in. It's a little bit faint. Okay. So it's about, <laughs> get the wrinkles out of the uh, tissue paper. So down here at the bottom of your sleeve is about an inch and a half. I'm pretty sure it's an inch and a half that you turn up. So I'm gonna go only to there. I'm gonna slash and spread it. So I'm gonna go to that point where the sleeve hem is. Really hope it's a one and a half. It is one, it's one and a half on the body. When I cut up to that point, I'm gonna tape down one of these right now, stabilize it. When I discovered that the, the like garment industry world doesn't use tissue paper in, um, you know, pattern drafting. <laughs> I was so happy. Like, it's so funny, because now I feel like most, most of the world, sewing world knows that you use this like um, manila card stock type of paper, you know, like what, like what a manila file folder is made out of, real similar to that. And I never looked back. Like after that, every pattern I, <laughs> I only wanted to sew patterns I drafted so that it could be on Manila and not this stupid tissue. I hate it, I hate tissue paper. I like that you can see through it. I like that a lot, but um, it's kind of revolutionary. So there you go. Now I have this half inch wedge going to nothing at my sleeve hem. So I've added a half inch to the armhole circumference right here. And I added a half inch right here, all the way through to the hem. All right, so now we're good. And so I'm gonna add this to this sleeve lining right now and to this back lining since these are the simplest changes that I've made to these pieces. So we'll do the same thing to them. Maybe we should just tape these to real paper. Oh yeah, that um, medical paper. We saw that tip in that, um, 
Well, I told you about it. Remember when I did the tips and hacks video recently and you guys all emailed me like your favorite tips and hacks? Where's my pattern pieces? Um, and uh, one of them in one of those videos, what, uh, what was her, um, what was her in her YouTube? She was an actual sewing teacher, probably in high schools or something. And so she has like this really small budget. And one of her things was, yeah, she would go get medical paper off Amazon. The stuff that, you know, the exam table paper. Oh, really? How did you do that? Did you iron it on, Terry? That's pretty clever. All right, so this piece is ready. This piece is ready. I think the other spicy pattern, of course I missed that, wow. The other spicy pattern uh, issues I have to deal with today are the side front and transferring all of the side front and center front to the lining pieces, all those changes. So definitely the ones I'm a little bit like, all right, I gotta make sure my head's screwed on straight for that. I'm really glad I went back to the house and got my lunch. <laughs> it's gonna be well needed after today. No, it's not gonna be hard. It's not gonna be hard, I promise. <laughs> So I'm not gonna compare these pattern pieces from um, the self to the lining like I will be with the front pieces because I didn't make any other changes. So I'm just gonna do the identical change I did on the corresponding piece. Okay, so let's find my size, which is this one here and I'm gonna draw it on here. It's this one here. Boy, what the heck? It's this one here, wow. I highly recommend using the PDF if you do something like this because the PDF you can unclick the sizes and just print the sizes that you want. I highly recommend doing that. All right, so we're gonna do a parallel line to the grain line. Just so, cause that's our only straight line reference on this piece because of the curves. Uh, we're gonna draw about an inch and a half line up there. Yeah, you ironed it on. Oh, that's so interesting. God, that just, that, I feel like that tickles a memory for me. But I don't think it was precisely that, but I like that idea. That's uh, very clever. All right, so. Bench. Swing it over to where your seam line right here that we drew Matt hits that. And I'm kind of like when I do these little fiddly tissue pieces and stuff, I kind of pull on them. Like my hand is holding it and, and I'm pulling pretty hard to keep it nice and straight and flat. So easy to get wrinkles and funkiness on this kind of stuff. Like it's pretty bad. I still need to staple my pattern piece to the um, paper here because just taping it isn't good enough. Since I'm gonna, uh, when I cut it out, then it'll just lift off the paper, you know, because I'm basically cutting off the tape. 
So think ahead. If you see that happening when you're going to cut something out, um, then you, you can stop and kind of, you know, staple it or whatever. If you're doing a fabric that the staples are going to bug, you can always put a piece of tape on the staples on the back side back here. But in general, you know, your staples, they're curved, right? They curve towards the paper. They're actually not going to snag unless it's something like, like the boucle that um, I think it was Libby mentioning because then that, that fiber is a little bit like, you know, fluffy and it could sneak under there. Yeah, that's so smart. I like that idea, Carrie. Hello, Nancy, how's it going? All right, let's do one more staple here. And I, and I know I'm probably more generous than most people with my tape and staples. It's just the, it's just the pattern drafter in me. All right, so now we have this piece and we just need to add our half inch to this side back lining piece and these hems. And then we'll have the sleeve and the side back done. <clears throat> so that's exciting. Sewing excitement. <laughs> oh no, what would be exciting? It's really just chipping away at these pieces and just kind of thinking about it methodically. I in general start with pieces that need the least because they're just, it's kind of just like your way to get your kind of your legs under you and kind of get in the groove of it. Um, my only caution is that if you were are, if you were doubting any of your fit adjustments, you're going to be sitting here doing this because these are a little easier, your mind starts wandering a little and you might start questioning any of the things you were kind of a little bit on the fence about. <laughs> and then you might go, hmm, maybe I wanna do that differently. And then you have to start over. So <laughs> I would definitely feel solid about what your plan is before you get too far. Maybe I'm just describing me, but I'm definitely a noodler. Like I will definitely, especially when my hands are busy. When my hands are busy like this, doing something as simple as just adding a half inch parallel line, my mind will start going, shoot, did I put the trash out today? You know, or, or something will pop into my head from a, um, like, like from the blazer, like fitting the blazer. What did I just do to my pore stripe there? There we go. It'll just like, sometimes when I just relax, something from looking at the dress form will pop into my head and I'll be like, hmm, maybe I should tweak that. <laughs> uh, I also have a pretty bad habit of, of kind of on that same note of when I go to cut it out in fabric, for me, by the time I'm doing that, my, I have a different kind of, um, you know, mindset, right? My, I've exited the pattern drafting mindset and I'm into the cutting it out mindset. And all I'm thinking about is grain line and fitting it in there. And if I'm going to have enough room for all my pieces and I do this and you've seen me do this live on camera so many times will cut off some of my changes because I am just kind of going, I just look at this line, right? And, and so what I do sometimes is I go like this, I will continue my change line in a bolder color. And I do it for, at every end. I know typically that I'm right-handed, my blade is gonna be to the right of the pattern piece going around. So most likely I'm gonna approach it here, but sometimes under the camera, I'm a little awkward and I'll go like this. So that's why I do from every angle there, you know? And then sometimes I'll even do this. If I'm really nervous, I'm gonna forget, especially when I lengthen something. How many times have you guys seen me lengthen something? Cut off the length on three of the pieces and remember it on the fourth. So, hey Lydia. I miss saying hi, I think. Do you think they're good, Sarah? Wait, what did Sarah ask? I missed it. Right, oh, Nancy, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You bought a pack of micro pore surgical tape on Amazon for pretty cheap and I love it for taping on tissue paper. Oh, that's great. I like that you think that way. <laughs> um, all right, so now 
what have we done to these pieces? So for the sleeve, um, we didn't actually add to the sleeve circumference, uh, but except that little tiny bit right here above this pivot point that I did, right? Because it's slashed and spread above this point here. This is supposed to be able to fit this piece down here, but it also needs to fit up here. And then the bottom down here actually went this way. So this went this way, or oh, this one down here, I'm sorry, it went this way. It kind of crosses over. So if anything, it gets smaller. If you're doing a really serious spread, what'll happen is this will bend. Your whole, this little section of your hem will bend and it'll be more of a curve. So we're just gonna look at, this is the lining. This is the um, fabric. So we're just gonna look at, let's cut off all these sizes here. We just want those three, there we go. Let's see how it looks. I feel like it's pretty negligible at that point, so we're not gonna worry about it too much. And the outer, we didn't do anything to the outer sleeve, so these pieces are all okay. So now we have our sleeve. You can draw this line. See how I have this little bit of a jog right here? See that? You need to kind of blend that in a little bit. So that you don't accidentally come down, follow the original line, and then have to shave off on the other side. All right, so these are all okay. Right? And then our outer sleeve is okay. Cool. All right, so that brings us to the center back. Let's do the center back. <laughs> I wish it was your idea. <laughs> If only you could monetize ideas, right? I'm just gonna put a weight on my uh, pattern pieces over there. All right, so now this is the back. So these pieces right here, this whole tissue paper that I haven't done anything to is the lining unadulterated. I haven't done anything to this lining piece. This one here is the outer piece before changes. So this is the one I've done and made changes to. So this was the one from the pattern envelope and then I made a bunch of changes to it. So I know for a fact that some of the changes we did were we shaved off of this armhole up here, remember, at the shoulder. That's what this piece is right here, All right? So here's this little shoulder piece and that's where it was. So technically I can just bring this over here and shave that off, right? Down here, it's a little different. Let's look at how much I've changed to this pattern piece. I think that this is somewhat the easiest way to make your changes to your lining, because you can go, okay, I've shaved the armhole here. We can just draw, I'll draw in red what I've done. That. Look at it, there's my back hip tilt. <laughs> um, and then I shaved a tiny bit here. Again, Sharpie, not the most accurate. So these are the changes that I've made to this piece. I've taken out a whopping inch right there at the center back waist, but you just saw me add a half inch to the side and that's kind of proves the point of sometimes you need it in different places, so. You just have your table paper bodice piece pin because I'm taking a pattern from size 12 to 16 because the 14, oh. They only went up to size 12. Oh yeah, exactly. Granted a size 12 could have been different back then too. All right, so I'm gonna take off this little bit of shoulder here off the lining piece. And I think that was what, three eighths that I took off? A little bit more. And I went to nothing at like three and three quarters. I think I went all the way down to there, right? 
use this one here. Let's see. Yeah, right here. Even just lay it on here and trim it off. Like that. Okay. And then right here, we have this little sliver. It's about an eighth and a half. That's what I say when I mean three sixteenths. <laughs> an eighth and a half. That's inches. <laughs> and then I get to about the notch there. Trim that off. Don't leave these lines there. You gotta trim it off, otherwise you might accidentally just cut on the original line. And then we have this big whopping one here. So uh, one thing to note is the back lining piece has a pleat at the top right here. And that's why I'm just using kind of the changes I've made and transferring it directly. Cause you can see this little whoop de doo right here. Like literally that looks like my back. <laughs> and that's because I've added this extra for the pleat so that you have a little bit more room inside there. It's always <clears throat> been so interesting to me that your lining will be bigger across the back inside, but it doesn't feel like that. And you actually do need that to move around. It's probably because what happens is when you're moving around it, it's not that you are expanding the inside of your jacket without expanding the outside. It's more that you need it to be loose so that you don't pop a seam. You don't like, what if it gets caught and it's, it's just kind of asymmetrical in there and getting caught on you, you know? So your pattern size more consistent ready to wear. Yeah, that's true. Oh no, pattern companies did vanity sizing and look at dress forms. <laughs> yeah, you're, yeah, that's quite a project you got there, Sarah. I mean, this is basically a 12 to a 16 right here. You know, when you're talking about grading sizes, it's really not much difference between each size. It's little increments, so. All right, so let's see. We need to get this change on here. Let's see if we can line this up. So where do you line your pattern pieces up? All right, so your collar is going to sew into this neck seam. So for this particular project, your um, necklines will actually line up. I'm pretty sure they line up and your shoulder seams are gonna line up. Not every pattern with a lining is going to line up like that though, because sometimes the, um, the lining of the inside of the garment. We'll have a big cutout right here, or this is the line piece, sorry, cut out right here because you sew a self or main fabric piece to it. And that's when you see it hanging on the hanger, you see the inside, you know, inside of the jacket looks like it's the outside of the jacket. So, but this one we can do that. We can pretty much check it out here, line it up. Don't worry about the notches matching each other. That's they're not sewing to each other. This is sewing to a lining piece. This one's sewing to a main fabric piece. So I'm just kind of looking at this amount here, you know, and do I want to, how much do I want to change there? We'll just take off, what is that? That is an inch and three eighths down here. I'm not doing the back pleat. You're gonna to have to be careful about that as well. I'm gonna get about there. We lose about an inch. And then I want all of this to be done by the time I get to about right here. I don't really wanna lose my pleat. So we're just gonna kind of blend it in here. Maybe even mimic this curve a little bit like that. Thankfully your lining is bigger, right? It's kind of messy. 
I'm gonna clean it up with my rotary knife, which I never would do normally. Where am I going? I'm gonna go to this curvier one here. There we go. All right, so we have our back and our lining piece here. This I don't need. That was just my reference. Let's get rid of all these pieces of paper here. Um, let's see, we can get, oh, I already had cut that off and saved it. <laughs> all right, we have these two pieces left. This is going much faster than I thought it would. Oh, it's for a dress. That's nice. That sounds awesome. All right, so same thing here. This is the piece I've made all the changes to. So I did the small bust adjustment to this piece here. Um, and this is my side front and this is the outer fabric. And then this one here is the lining fabric. This is the original. So before I made all those changes, this is what it looked like and it's quite a bit different. Let's see here. I'm gonna line it up on the lengthen and shorten line down here. I'm looking for a, a zero, zero point. Look at how much I've changed that. Let's zoom in. <laughs> Let's zoom in and see the madness of my side boob. Go away. All right, so it's pretty hard to see, but you see this blue, heavy blue line here. This is this pattern piece. This is where it ends, right here. It's a little longer now too. So this is how much I've changed it. This makes sense to me because when we did this DSBA, this, uh, which is a small bust adjustment, it dropped my armhole down. Technically, it doesn't seem like that's what's happening. It seems, it feels like you're raising the bodice up. That's not what happens though, you drop the armhole. And if you've been here at all, you know how much I feel like dropping the armhole really inhibits the mobility of your sleeve in a garment. You need a closer fitting armhole. And when you think about it through, it makes sense. But at first you're thinking bigger is gonna give you more space and more mobility, but it doesn't because if you ever see that, that shirt that you know you lift your arm up and it pulls, you can see the point is like way down here, right? And you're like, I can't get past that. And if this was gone, like what if it was way up here, then you can move your whole arm, right? So you want that armhole to be situated really close to you know, the, the kind of that nook around your, where your arm is attached to your body. So then you have these, this full mobility and, and full range of motion. You study this a lot in outdoor clothing because you're dealing with people that are maybe holding a paddle or maybe they're, um, I, you know, diving, scuba diving or swimming or whatever. They need this full range of motion and no hindrance to the mobility. So this dropping that armhole definitely gave me that. And so then I had to um, bring in my shoulder line because it was a little bit too far out. And then I worked on how it fit and felt. So that's where I'm at now. So I'm not worried about this because you can see this also dropped down here. So now really when it's on the garment, this is actually up higher. Because remember, this is where this seam was. So it's still attaching to the bodice up here. So in essence, it actually raised my armhole once I got rid of all this excess right here. And you can think about these things from so many different angles and draw a, lot, a few different conclusions. So don't, don't get too crazy about thinking about these things. Like do what works for you and don't think that you are doing it wrong you know, you know that these home sewing fit adjustments are just that. You don't do this in the garment industry because you're not custom making things. You're making things to fit people 
generally. They'll fit somebody, <laughs> you know, so just remember that if you're working on fitting yourself that you can do whatever you want. I know there's certain little rules and guidelines and those are really great because they do kind of keep you on track and they keep you from making mistakes like um, changing your grain line on something or creating another issue um, or maybe affecting a piece that you didn't mean to affect when you went to make that change. So just remember that, um, in, and if you did this blazer three years from now, you might do all these changes completely differently. So just remember that. So you can see here, this was my original, this is my current one, and it's quite a bit different. So I could do the same thing I just did on the back. I could compare these two and go, okay, this is what I need to do to the lining piece, right? Here's my lining piece. Let's compare the lining piece. Yeah, that's true, Ray. It isn't black and white. Um, where's our zero, zero point? So I feel like our zero, zero point, and when I say zero, zero point, that is such a um, pattern drafting term for grading. It means it's the point that is absolutely the truest form of neutral and everything happens to the pattern outside of that. It can go up, it can go down, it can go left, it can go right, right? Your X, your Y, positive and your negative, and that's your zero, zero point. And so you're not sewing this lining piece to this outer piece, but we're just trying to figure out like, okay, what, how does it relate? Cause maybe the, your changes are so drastic. You're like, I just want to copy this piece and make the lining changes to it. So that's why I'm looking at it like this. And so finding the zero, zero point, I'm going to say is the hem because if your hem, and I, I think what it is, is a one and a half here, right? If you fold up your hem, like this. Why are you flaring like that? You need a piece of tape, I think. That's what you're telling me. All right, so when you fold that up right there, um, here is the hem right here of this edge, see, right there. And then here is the half inch seam allowance. There's probably another zero, zero point, but this one I know <laughs> for sure. So let's draw the seam allowance on this one. We know that these two have to sew together here. They actually don't sew to each other any other place on the pattern. They only sew to each other here. So there we go. That's our zero, zero point, right? And we can use some removable tape and then we can do some comparisons. Cause hey, if it's identical, except the, you know, hem difference, it makes it kind of easy. I doubt it's identical. I think it's going to be a little different. Yeah, I mean, look at that. It's already, a, it's a little smaller. The outer is smaller. Oh wait, let's slide this over. I was lining up. No, it's not. Okay, here it is. Here it is. Sorry. There we go. I was on the wrong line. Okay. I don't have much. <laughs> I don't have much uh, purchase for tape here. Let's see if I can wrap this around this edge here. Look at that. So the difference is right up here. The top piece is the lining piece. And like I said early on today, remember I was saying, oh, your lining's going to be a little bit different in the armhole area. And it's because, you know, the lining and a lot of times, like if you've ever sewn one of my bag patterns and they're lined, you'll know every time I'm talking about when we're sewing it, I'm like, okay, the lining's gonna be a little bit tricky here because we didn't make an, a separate lining piece. We try and keep it as simple as possible for people. So because the lining and the outer are the exact same piece and the lining is dropped down into the bag, there's no, like, there, and there's stiffener in between. The lining essentially should have been a tad smaller because it's not really functionally being stretched to its limits like the outer is when the outer is going around stiffener and the lining's on the inside of the stiffener. But it would create all these different pattern pieces. It's really just easier to make the adjustment when you're sewing. When you're doing something like this, it's the opposite. So the lining is actually going around 
the outer fabric. It's just doing it on the inside of the garment. So it needs this room here for your armhole to actually behave and not feel all bound up in your armholes when you put on the jacket. That's why when people go, oh, I made this outfit and I decided to line it and then they cut the exact same pieces and they're like, it works pretty good. The sleeve's a little tight and that's why. All right, so we could just copy our lining piece and then just add this amount here, right? That's the difference. Personally, I like the idea of making the changes to the lining piece that I made to this one. Especially because look at this, I have this little wing ding here. <laughs> so here's the uh, tissue and then that's the paper I've added. And I'm not sure like, let's see what this looks like on here. We're gonna line it up here. Um, line it up on the grain line. So this is where it was. Yeah, so this little wing ding definitely comes out there. Look at that big change. I actually think that I just should not have made the size 16. Oh yeah, Lynn, nice. Yeah, I mean like that big of a change across the bust, it's quite a bit. See, now I'm starting to think like, hmm, what would be a different way I could have gone about this? I think, yeah, like I, I actually think I could have um, sewn the 12. I don't, I'm not in the size 12 range though. And even when I put my measurements in, they recommended the 16. Interestingly, I just got my, um, some plots back from a printer yesterday and one of them was the Linux uh, shirt dress by Cash Marit, and I had them print the size 12. So whenever I looked at that at the time, I picked the 12. Maybe it's because when I put my measurements in in this, the Cash Marit calculator, I use my measurements over clothes. I didn't specifically see anything in the instructions to not do that. And I was thinking, oh, I want this to go over clothes. So I'm gonna put my measurements in there and maybe I should not have done that. I was thinking too, being too clever. Do I have the 12 lining pieces? Uh, well, yeah, it's right here. I mean, all three are right here. Uh, see that? So I have the 12, 14, 16. So yeah, that's actually, that's a good point, Ray, because I started thinking this way the other day. And so I started looking at the 12 and I was like, yeah, that wouldn't have been enough because look at that difference. Okay, so I think that, um, what do you guys think? Which way do I want to do this? I'm, it, by the time I figure this, what I want to do, I could have done it already. <laughs> I just want to trace this off and then add this uh, little bit of lining here. Yeah, exactly, Nancy. I did, Libby. I did what they recommended. I used I used their calculator. You put you put in your high bust, your full bust, uh, your hip, and your waist. absolutely needed the small bust adjustment and then some. All right, so um, let's get a piece of paper. All right, you know, basically I got free pattern paper because they printed all these uh, patterns for the utility jacket and they forgot to click on the um, all the text and notches they were I felt so bad telling them like you guys forgot all this text and they were like no so I'm using all that as pattern paper it's all these naked pattern pieces <laughs> all right so I'm going to trace this 
<laughs> with a Sharpie. Oh, I hate doing this with Sharpie, but we'll do it. I want you to be able to see. So I'm tracing my main pattern piece, the one I've done all the changes to. And then I'm going to try and imitate the differences between the lining and the main piece and just make my own lining piece. I think it's gonna be about the about easier. Okay, so I need to figure out the notches though, because these don't two don't sew to each other, remember? Let's uh, get the tracing wheel out and put the grain line on here. And I'm gonna put this lengthen and shorten line on here because it's been kind of a handy point of reference. And I think I'm gonna put these notches on here, even though they're different. Okay. Oh. So I did not, did I just not, oh, it just didn't transfer? What the heck? I think I stopped right there, didn't I? <laughs> right, Barb, <laughs> right, Barbara. <laughs> Yeah, I can show you that sizing calculator if you want. Hi, Susie. Oh, the Seychelle top I itched to stitch. And by their chart, you're a 22 double D at the bust and a 32 at the hips. Wow. That is kind of a big range. I like that she drafts for cup sizes. It makes her range a little bit more uh, rich with sizes. It, it's not the... She doesn't have like the biggest, like she doesn't go up as high as a lot of, um, of the inclusive pattern companies do, but um, the cup sizing is nice. <laughs> we like your gibberish, Nancy. <laughs> All right, so let's see. We're gonna raise the armhole an inch. Maybe what I could do is line this up on here. Mm. This feels a little vague. It's my inch. Just thinking, just thinking, making sure. I have this one, and I don't like it when there's that the hem isn't marked on there. But I read through, and I swear it says turn it up one and a half inches. Let's just look. Let's make sure. <laughs> Did you see? See, that's awesome. I'm adjusting the lining. I'm um, I'm just making my lining piece based on the changes of the outer piece. All right. I, I hate to say this out loud, but honestly, I know that some some of the stuff was is written in here, like how I should have measured and everything. Oh yeah, measure yourself in your underwear. That's what it says. I just find there's just too much wording in patterns. It's too much. Too many paragraphs. I'm sorry, it's too many paragraphs. I want a bulleted list. I love these bulleted lists. Right now I'm looking for seam allowances. You know, they're not written on here, even though it says finishing seam allowance, not finishing, but um, seam allowances. Yeah, it doesn't tell you right there what the hem allowance is and there's no hem allowance bullet. I already went through this, you guys. Oh, you know the other way I can tell is by the hem facings. So back. Yep. 
Yeah. Oh, this is one and three quarters. Yeah, that's so cool. She has a lot of sizes. I'm not saying she doesn't have a lot of sizes. Yeah, she does. And the cup sizing really adds a nice rich layer. Oh, that's funny, Nancy. <laughs> I know. I know it's really helpful for people. Let's find this um, hem. Where's the bag, the lining step? Is this it? All right. You know, they're probably not gonna say, they're just gonna say sew it together with a um, half inch seam. But I feel like I saw it somewhere because that's where I got the one and a half inch. And then because, you know, you need to know. Oh yeah, here it is. Attach line to main. Fold main body hem to wrong side by one and a half inches. Press and unfold. Okay, just making sure. I'm right. One inch up there. And then we go out. About five eighths. And I'm gonna make sure that, um, and this right here, this actually right here could be even a right angle, but I'm not gonna do that. Um, I'm gonna just do this. I'm gonna sketch something in and then I'm gonna try it out with my pattern pieces. This just lines up right with the side seam. All right, so I'm gonna compare these before I cut it out with the seams they sew to, which is the center front. All right, so these two pieces we're setting aside so we don't use them. Okay, so here's the front. The front has a lot of pieces. So let's just go over what's going on here. The front, so here's the front without my changes. Here's the front with my changes, but let's just look at it without any changes, just your pattern pieces so you understand what's happening here. So when you think about a blazer and then you um, are wearing it and the collar's folded back, you need the outer fabric on the inside of your blazer to show on the right side. And so you don't have a full lining piece because most of the lining to your center front is actually in regular fabric and that's this piece here. And then you just have this narrow skinny lining piece that sews to it like that and that makes up the inside of the jacket. Um, yeah, I found it, Barbara. <laughs> yeah, right, Nancy, that's so funny. <laughs> no, Nancy, you like gadgets. Let's go back to square one and remind, you love gadgets and trying things out, and that is pretty cool, and I agree with Terry, you're very brave. Isn't there videos for Letter Low? You're always talking about how um, it just feels like you've just been tossed into this pit of no instruction, like you're in an escape room of pattern drafting. <laughs> okay, so this is my original one. I haven't made too many drastic changes to this. I did the, um, let's find my zero, zero which would be this hem here, down here, except that I've lengthened it. So we're gonna do our, and look at that, it almost lines up because of some of the changes I made. All right, so let's line up. Oh, why is that? Uh... Oh, because I shortened it there, Never mind. Okay, we're gonna line it up up here. Yeah, because of the small bust adjustment, uh, I did decrease this waist amount right here. Okay, so let's line this up here. 
I know I've changed the shoulder and then this piece right here. And then we went, we had to add back some of the waist after we did the small bust adjustment. You love gadgets and notions too, darling? <laughs> yeah, you just need the instructions, yeah. But there's gotta be like videos, right? Hi, Nancy, how's it going? Yeah, you're fine. You can hang out though. It's not like we're spoiling the ending. Maybe seeing the ending will help, right? Okay, so. Yeah, I mean, I brought, I really got rid of a lot through that area there. Okay, so <clears throat> let's compare our lining pieces to the outer and see how different they are. They're, they're probably not because they're, they're all tethered at the center front line here. So they can't be too different. Lining up your um, tissue is the worst part. So I'm comparing my lining pieces to my outer pieces. I drew on a one inch line here for the seam allowance because you sew this lining piece to the outer. Get some more. The only place you have a different seam allowance, I did notice this as well, is at the center front. Am I on the right line there? Yeah, I am. On the center front right here, it's 3 8 of an inch. Can you guys see? Not really, huh? Oh, Andrea does the letter low. That sounds kind of familiar. That's right. That's great. <laughs> That's good, Nancy. Maybe one day it'll just be like, oh, you know, kind of click. I hate those, those, that kind of philosophy though, you know, um, it's like those, uh, remember those pictures where it looked like like it just looked like static and you, when you looked at it long enough, something would jump out at you like a picture. I've never seen a picture in any of those. All right, so these pattern pieces are pretty much the same, um, except right here, you don't need this little flange of the outer. It's not a flange, it's your hem. Because remember the lining, this folds up and meets the lining. So pretty much the same except right, right around here. So we'll just make our um, lining pieces match the side front that they're sewing to, as well as do some of the changes of fit that we've done. So let's check out the changes we've done here. So we've brought in all that right there. Let's, uh, Oh, and just as a note too, like when you lay these pattern pe two pattern pieces together, your uh, lining for your blazer, I am lining it up, but it's parallel here, but I noticed that it doesn't quite fit perfectly. Like I even sewed it like this. I was looking at this before the stream today. So when you sew these two pieces, I'm not sure if it's just a quirk of the pattern, but if I line up and sew these together, look, there's a, there's a notch right there. It matches perfect, right? I'll, um... I don't have my all over here, so I'll do this, use a pencil. So if you line it up on the half inch and you just walk it like you're sewing it, there's your other notch, almost matches perfect. A little wrinkle in the tissue probably. That one matches great. And then find your size, which is this one right here. I am finding that this is like an eighth of an inch off right here. You can't see. It's an eighth of an inch when I get up here. It's about an eighth of an inch off. So uh, note that. So all these notches match. And then when you get to this one. What did I just do with that pencil? Oh, don't you just hate that when that happens? the heck? Oh, I 
have is this other pencil. Oh, this isn't the one I broke. I broke that at home. Okay. <laughs> All right. So walk it on here. This outer line is the one I'm working with. And it's like, yeah, it's like an eighth of an inch up here off. No biggie. No big deal. All right. So line up here. Give ourselves a few more. I need two. Well, I have a one in a um, package brand new, but I haven't like I, I'm not gonna put my give myself two alls, you know. But yeah, <laughs> right. I don't typically need one on this side of the room. I only have it because I'm all, I'm paranoid that one day they're going to stop making and selling them. <laughs> all right, so there's our uh, lining of our blazer. So this one's cut in main fabric. This one's in lining. So we're just going to use that as our template here. And we're going to line this up and trace our piece on here. Oh, let's put this on paper. <laughs> Makes you feel like you're in fashion college. <laughs> tell you I'm a lot nicer <laughs> fashion college felt I loved I loved going to fit them like don't get me wrong but um there's definitely um let, let me just tell you thank goodness social media didn't exist then because it felt like you were living inside of Instagram sometimes. You know what I mean? It's fashion school. I, my, like the, the students I went through with were pretty chill. And typically fashion designers themselves aren't really dressing the most fashionable. It's kind of a weird thing. Or they're dressing very simply. Um, all the other majors, though, it was like look literally like watching social media because um, there were, I think, five other main categories like visual merchandising and, um, uh, God, what were the others? Interior design and a couple of others. So it was kind of intense sometimes. I was coming to school in literally like boxer shorts and a T-shirt. <laughs> So <laughs> I, I like, like a true, like, you know, you see those fashion designers that just wear all black and that's it. They're just like, I gave up long ago, <laughs> you know? They're like, I'm going to create stuff for you to keep up with, but I'm not going to keep up with it. You know, that's why it's all a farce. It's all a farce. It's all just money. All right. So I'm going to trace this piece on directly onto this lining piece. Sorry, I'm off the, I zoomed in. And so there's just not much room over here. I need to switch everything to my left side, but I'm right-handed. Look at this. Live, I'm living on the edge here. I got like a black Sharpie open. Do you guys ever feel like when you open the, the cap to um, something like a Sharpie or your, your rotary knife is open, do you ever feel like as soon as you do that, it's almost like there's a tea kettle going off and it doesn't stop going off until you cap it? <laughs> That's how I feel about things like that. So like literally I've been thinking about like it's in the back of my head, shut the cap, shut, shut the cap, shut the cap, shut the cap. <laughs> Okay. 
I'm just transferring the size and the silhouette. And now we're going to compare again this piece. I had a few teachers too that were just honestly not great human beings, you know? Like, they, they, I, that's not what I mean to say. I don't know if they were good or bad human beings. They just weren't very approachable. They weren't very approachable. And there were a few that were extremely judgmental. And like, I think at the time, the um, thing for a student to do, because we're all, most of us were, pre were young, you know, like we were right out of high school, but not everybody. Um, and I think that the first thing, because you don't really, you're not really equipped with the depth of human experience to be able to identify why this person treats you this way. So the quick thing to do is to be like, oh, well, you're a washed up whatever anyway. Why are you teaching at fashion school? And that's not accurate at all because some, we were incredibly lucky to have some of the instructors we had there because of their skill set and because of their experience in the industry. It was such a gift to be taught by some of them. I had the teachers of the books that people buy that you see, like Amadan Crawford and, and those folks, they were our teachers, you know, so that is pretty cool. And those books are still the books that you see being used to teach fashion and pattern drafting and stuff. So no one teaches you fashion by the way. They teach you how to sketch and how to make patterns. That's it. And color theory. Ooh, color theory. All right, what am I doing here? I'm comparing these two. Um, that's not what I want to be doing. I want to be comparing these two. All right. But I haven't trimmed this off yet. Yeah, so let's just now get a pattern piece for you. This, that was my problem here. I need, you need a piece of paper. I imagine the school there is quite a bit different now too. It's probably extremely different. I'm just putting this on its own piece because I shouldn't have a uh, started before it had its own piece of paper. <laughs> Have you just been aimlessly looking for your pattern, Barbara? <laughs> Maybe not so aimlessly, but you're like, how could I have lost my pattern? I've lost my three hole punch. Did, is it sitting on your counter? Because I can't find my three hole punch anywhere right now. <laughs> it's driving me nuts. Okay, let's put this back on here. Oh, really? That's good to know, Nancy, about the caps on the washables. Yeah, right? I, 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 I felt that, like, I actually thought that, like, oh, like, I don't, we don't know this person's story, and they don't owe us any explanations. And um, there were a couple of teachers, though, that I was just downright terrified of, like um, the sketching teacher that made me pass out. I didn't like her. And she definitely, in my opinion, I look back, I think of any of the teachers, she was the only one that I feel like definitely had something going on where she was compensating. It's like, just like really overcompensating and was taking it out on us. And that's a shame. She was, she was very good at what she did. I never got a piece of that though. <laughs> she would belittle me. Made me feel bad. I don't know how, but she, they knew my dad is my real, my like biological father is an artist. Um, and they would bring it up. Like, lady, I've met my dad once in my life. 
I, I don't have anything to do with him. I don't know why we're comparing me to him or why we think I should have his skills. <laughs> he doesn't have anything to claim over this. <laughs> it's kind of funny. All right, so this is my center front, uh, my outer. These are my lining pieces. And I'm going to trim off that, but we're going to check our side front lining here. Remember this one we made a bit ago? I'm gonna cut off, I don't wanna cut my pattern pieces on the table here, but I'm gonna cut these off here. Just the side seam here. I wish I actually knew my, my uh, classmates, their information. I would love to reach out to some of them. I didn't keep in touch with any of them. I don't know if any of them did either. It's kind of weird. I can see my Sharpie line here. So let's, we're going to draw a straight line. <laughs> you found it next to the blender. Oh, where is that being played, Delwyn? <laughs> I didn't even know yeah, exactly, Martina. I, my uh, whole world, I have my husband, that's it. And so when I asked him, I was like, have you seen the three hole punch? He was kind of like, I feel like we've been through this before. Like you recently were looking for, for that and um, didn't you ever find it? And I said, well, I did and I've been using it. <laughs> I don't know what I did with it. I thought I brought it to work and I can't find it anywhere here. Um, there's not many places to look here. And so then I looked at home and then I was like, no, it's gotta be at work. And then I looked at here and I just can't find it anywhere. So I'm cutting off this little thing here because we don't need that. That is from my main, right? The lining doesn't need that. So we're gonna line up this seam and walk it along this line here, but we need to come out here as well. So let's come out to this line here. So we have a notch here. Oh, this is this one. This one's notches. Oh, 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 we're, we're, made, we're transferring notches from this lining piece to this one as well. We don't want that. That was the notch on the outer. We were just using it as a reference. You know what, let's back up a little bit. And we're gonna go to this pink line, right? This is why I like using pencil sometimes. I'm gonna put pencil on this line over here. And then that way what I can do is transfer it. Right there. All right, and then let's uh, fold back. Let's find our transition here. Like this. Oh, but we said it's up here. No, it's not. This is the this is too long. This is this is longer, isn't it? Yes, 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 yes. We need to cut an inch and a half off this. That's what it is. Okay. Right? Or just an inch, actually, an inch. Yeah, because we need to trim off the uh, hem amount. 
Oh, that's not it. Um, where's the, uh, here it is. We just need to trim off this amount here, but it doesn't show there's a trimmed amount. Maybe we don't want to use that as a zero, zero point. I need a zero, zero point on this. You know? And we did it this way, right? Yeah, this was our zero, zero. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, I had my, I was right. <clears throat> so we need to trim off. Oops. This much here. Yeah, so we need to trim off two inches, two inches. We're just gonna fold it back for now. My little blade on both of my tape dispensers is a little bit um, tired. <laughs> All right, let's walk this one more time on the seam line and then we're going to transfer the notches. So this is one right here. Which one is mine? Right here. Oh, oh, oh. oh, it went, okay, I ha can't, I'm looking at the wrong line. <clears throat> I'm making this look so easy, aren't I? I'm following this line right here. That is on the right side. Just walking my seam, checking my notches, checking where it lines up up here. That looks so much more reasonable. All right, now we're going to find our armhole curve here by lining that up like that. Like that right there. And we could probably blend this a little better. And... I'm matching this seam line to this one's seam line here, which is the half inch seam right there. Sorry, I know my lines are getting a little messy. I'm, the purple is my actual, I'm not a big fan of how swooped that looks right there. So I'm just kind of smoothing that transition. It looks a little bit too, you know, uh, L-shaped. Now to blame, exactly. All right, so let's. If you're really nervous about some of your changes. Hello, B. Hello, Roger. I'm gonna say Rogers. <laughs> Welcome. Oh, we didn't want to be lined up there. We want to be lined up right here. That's better. That's better. More like that. I had it still turned to that one inch seam. Uh, 
Uh, if you're nervous about doing some of these changes, you can always cut and sew a mock-up and just make sure, even if you're just doing um, it not in your blazer fabric, like just some a bed sheet or some fabric, because you've already figured out your fit. Unless you want to try the fit, then you might want to do it in something that's similar, right? I'm just going to put back this little taper. I had it folded back there and I, I kind of want it back. I don't really like it when it's, I want, I want the seam allowance to be able to reach wherever I want to end up putting it. So there we go. All right. As I anticlimactic as that seems, that's it. Side front lining, and I'm going to um, transfer the marks in just a second. So this piece here only needs this little half inch added there, and um, this one here needs most of the changes because that's where all of the action happened. I have removable tape on here. See, sometimes that's what I don't like about the tissue. The removable tape, it's mostly okay with it, but it can be a little dodgy. We'll wrap it around the edge since I haven't stapled this piece too. Got a staple. Make sure that your lining doesn't shift like mine feels like it is doing right now. I don't like tools on both my sides. You're still getting used to not having to hide things. What are you hiding? Yeah, right, Barbara? Oh, that's great. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, I got a little bit, uh, you know, into the whole fitting thing, kind of going without thinking about that because I just wanted to make sure that I did what I wanted. <laughs> also, I always figure, even if I probably would have done this a little differently if you guys weren't watching, um, I figure too, like sometimes I just want it to even be the most experience as possible. So you just never know then what I might run into. And then it's something for us to talk about. But yeah, if I were doing this on my own, I, don't, I probably wouldn't have done much different. I don't know why I'm cutting this out. I don't really mean to. All right, this piece is ready to go, except that I wanna make sure that this little half inch that I added down here, I need this. So we'll put some happy faces and sometimes I just put some arrows like this pointing so that I don't accidentally cut it off right here at this original line. Same with here. Color that in right there so that if I'm coming down this side, I don't accidentally cut along that line. The other thing you can do if you're worried you're gonna do that is put a staple across the line like this. And then that way, I can't even see that one though. I will be like, what the heck? Why would I put a staple there? I can't do that with my rotary knife. Oh. Okay. So let's look at our markings for this one here. Looks like we need the side back lining and just these notches and that's it. So that's not too bad. So let's figure out what they sew to and we can just use those. 
That's all. It's in this like sleeve bunch, huh? Side back lining. Here we go. Don't these little pieces, man. <laughs> Don't want to lose any of them. Um, another thing you can consider when you're sewing something like this is, I think this is dangerous, but it can also give you some options, is only cutting out like what you are, like the main body of the jacket and don't cut the lining out. I feel like that could be a little risky because you might end up fitting your jacket a little bit and then fitting your, you'd have to fit the lining. But some folks can do that. They can attach the lining to the jacket and then start fitting both of them while they're, while they're trying to. Bonsoir, Sabine. <laughs> How are you? Oh, you don't have to hide things from your kids. <laughs> All right, so let's put this on this lining piece here, or let's put this one on here rather. And then we're gonna check that it still sews together. So it's about a quarter of an inch off down here. And I think what we'll do, I think I'll adjust it up here. I trust this a little bit less. So we'll add it to this side front. So let's cut this piece out. All right. <laughs> Thank you. It's nice of you. Six fifty. <laughs> I'm just going to trim it there and I'm going to trim this one here. Okay. Same thing. We want all this. Don't trim that off. Okay. So now we can look at this here. The most accurate way to check if a seam is sewing together is measuring it, not walking it. But the walking is pretty good. And it can also help you detect if there's any like weird bumps. Like I can kind of see a little bit of a curve here and I do see that here. So I might just leave that. I'm just afraid I'll lose a little bit of it when I go to sew it. All right, so let's fill this in. All right, now let's figure out our notches of our front facing, not this piece, this piece right here, this skinny little guy. Fashion school is where I learned how to do that. <laughs> they tell you to do that. You should see the rooms when you're done at the end of every class. Um, the teacher will come by and just push it all to the floor. Like you have to keep your, like just this sitting here has been bugging me. And you can see I'm always doing this, right? I'm always, I didn't do it much today, but I will sit there and arrange my little like stuff. It's always like that. <laughs> and it helps a lot. And um, a few people that work with me in my, my room before, like I have a friend that she and I would sew together first time a few times I did that she'd be like what are you doing I'm like I just get my keep my surf surface I clean it up after every day you know and then she started doing it she goes this is awesome my table's always clean and she goes and I just pick it all up at once I'm like yeah and you can tell that's why my friend uses a little tiny uh, children's rake to clean up her floor she did something similar with sewing she didn't do a lot of pattern drafting she did mostly sewing and so she would do the same thing but she would uh, use her little rake to clean it up at the end of the day so if you're gonna measure, I don't have a very clean ruler right now. All my rulers are pretty gross with uh, 
Sharpie on them, but we'll see. You can measure along. We're gonna measure this one because we want these notches to transfer onto this one here. And what you can do is you can go up and measure where each one is and then write your measurement, you know, seven inches. And then this one is nine and three quarters. It also helps like if you lose your ruler, you can put your ruler right back on there at the nine and three quarter mark. This one here, pretty much at 11 and seven eighths. And then I don't have one right there. So I probably should put one. 14 and a quarter plus. We'll just make it 14 and a quarter. Here's my 18 and 18 and three quarters. And then you just transfer it over here. Nine and three quarters. These curves can be a little tricky. You can draw your half inch seam allowance on there. That helps. So let's put these both at 12. 14 and a quarter. It's not being very accurate. 18 and what did I say it was? 18 and three quarters. So we're still missing a little bit right here. <clears throat> or maybe I need to bring this one down. How we fix that? Did I not remove that? Oh yeah, I did, I did. That's what that is, okay. Just making sure. Uh, I wasn't about to do. Yeah, like that. We need a little bit more there. Oh, cute, Barbara. What do you need to start doing that? <laughs> oh, like your table? Yeah. <laughs> Just throw it all on the floor. It's very empowering, trust me. It's like one of the first things I learned there. Um, what am I doing with these pieces of tape in my hand? Why are there so many? <laughs> that looks so much better. I'm glad we double checked that. Except that I just dipped a little bit right there. All right, we're done. I'm gonna put this one right here. And I'm gonna use my notcher since I made kind of a complete mess of it, which is just this little like um, doohickey that makes the notches for me. Cause I don't usually use that kind of marker when I, do pattern drafting and um, I don't make such a mess of it either usually. There we go. Usually just do the notch and then I go like this. Like that. Kind of messy. All right, and then this one only says two Oh, uh, that's the side front. Two lining. I also would never use purple. OK, 
I can throw that away. All right, we're done. The only thing we need to make sure we like, okay, see, I see how this is really a, a, like a super skinny point. That we don't need. And this is how you get rid of that. This is when you see these little um, squared off pieces. That's when you do it. It's too hard to cut this little narrow point accurately, especially if you're doing it in production. That's when you square it off like that. I said our last pattern pieces are this mess here. So we have our side front hem, side back hem, center back. And then we have this, um, I don't know much about this. This is one thing I've been a little perplexed by, this chest shield. And then this is that center back facing. That's not a yoke, but it's the, there's a word for this. And I, I never have remembered it because I've brought this up before. It's like to give the garment hanger appeal when it's hanging on the hanger. And then you see this, um, you know, flash of the main fabric on the inside, and then you'll see like a nice label or whatever you want on there. But did we change our back enough to have to change this? It's interesting that the, this sews to the lining all the way up to the neck. I would think the lining would be at a seam there. My pieces literally look like a hot mess. <laughs> and get rid of that. That's not one I'm using. Let's see it. Do I have them all here? Front facing, front lining, front lining, center front, back lining, center front, side front. And these were sleeve pieces, right? Side back. And these are all sleeve. Here we go, and center back. That's center back lining. Where's my center back? Side back, side front, center front, center back lining. Oh, here it is. Lining, lining, lining. We're gonna put those away. Lots of seams, oh. Like, not princess seams though, right? Not just princess seams. Yeah, that's right. Is it, was it you the one that was trying to get the Vogue site? To work, yeah, the Vogue eight three three three. But you ended up, and you like reached out to them, and it all worked out. That's pretty cool. So this piece right here sits like this. Doesn't look like it though, does it? we're okay. It's going to go all the way out there. I'll probably just leave this piece. I'm already intrigued on why the lining goes all the way up in there with the pleat. It doesn't touch anything that I've changed except a little bit right there. But uh, I, I pretty much went to zero about right there. You can, I can still see my the, the ink of the paper or pattern. All right, and then this right here, the chest shield interfacing. This probably needs to change. Let's cut off all of the sizes. So what? I don't know much about this piece. 
this is something that goes here, right? Right? So it looks like it needs to be identical to this piece here. These are the little things. I, I know you guys probably don't want to change these things because it's like, oh my gosh, it'll just all work out. But this is the kind of thing that might drive you crazy. You only cut this in interfacing. This is what the, the horse hair interfacing is for. And I'm just, I'm just not sure. It must offer some stability maybe. I'm very curious about this, what the history is. It's optional too, you don't have to do it. Oh yeah, it even says horse hair cam. I couldn't see it because it was over my text there, but yeah. So we just need to make it identical here to this piece. So let's, um, line it up, baby. Get rid of this little extra piece of paper. It's been driving me nuts. Of how to look past it. Um, put that right there. I just kind of shoot for somewhere, you know, towards the end. And then we'll cut off, because remember I've changed my shoulder line a bit. Okay. And let's find my size down here. The heck? That is my size right there. It's the last one? No. One, two, three. Oh, it's one, two, three, N. There we go. This is it right here. Make it easier on myself later. All right, we just have our hems. The hem interfacing goes to your outer piece. And so in a way, um, if you've made yours smaller, you can just cut this and then cut it to fit if you want. So this is the front hem. So let's put our front hem together. Or, you know, like this. Right? It's gonna match up here. My one inch overlap. There we go. You guys are real troopers. This is kind of a tedious amount of uh, pattern junk. For view A or view B, what am I doing? I'm doing view B. I'm doing the shorter version. go. Side front. Side back. Very easy. My last two p pattern pieces on the table. Woo woo. Got you be. Where does this notch go to? To heck. Where does this notch go to? There's no notch. I'm gonna leave this piece. I'm like, wait, is it already on the fold open? Not on the seam? So is that me? But it's interfacing. You don't notch interfacing. One, yeah. But there's no notch it goes to. That's really weird. 
That's really, really weird. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm totally perplexed. I probably just need to read the directions here. Um, uh, you know, and also you cut two, so there's one for each side. Look at how much. <laughs> That's quite a bit. I mean, I guess, no, I did not take that much off. Here's my size right here. 12, 14, 16. That's my size. Did I take that much off? I could have, I really could have. I took a lot off back there. Let's see the line. This is the center back, I mean the um, grain line. I feel like I do need to shift it a little bit because uh, I've tapered it. I'm just gonna leave that. If that's my only mystery piece, <laughs> I'm gonna look at the directions real quick. Because in, in general, you cut the piece, the direction it's going to be sewn on, right? So um, if this is supposed to be like this, that would be very unlikely because all the sizing is going this way, so the grade. If I were to line it up like this, and, and it's view B, so I should turn that off. It's just weird. All right. Ooh, I wanna cut my stuff out so bad right now. I'm so glad that it's at home because I'm, I'm hungry too and I would just start. <laughs> this kind of gives me a week to kind of marinate on all this um, and see what I think. All right, so I wanna see this notched piece. And then I'll talk about what we're making next week too, real quick. All right, well. I had still had them print out the PDF version of my instructions I'm really glad I did. It cost four dollars, though. <laughs> I had them do it front and back, and then they and they did the front page in color, which was nice. Um, it is it's bigger than that little book, and it'll stay open, which is nice. Yeah, I don't see. Oh, you know what? That notch might be for view A when you're doing the pleat. The back pleat. That could be what it is. It's just out of context for me because I, I cut the pleat off. Um, I didn't end up monkeying around with my welt pocket seam. Because once I added back the half inch, it, it went back to normal. It went back to the, the exact same size it was. I'm just going to see if I see the notch like indicated anywhere, but I don't think so. Yeah, but it's the pleat. There's more than one way to cook a blazer, right? Or any pattern for that matter, matter, matter. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, so, okay, so if I look closely at this, there is a notch on this pattern piece. That's the, yeah, and that's the side, this is the center back and the side back. So there is a notch down there, so if you're making the pleat, then you need that little notch. All right, cool. We're not crazy yet. All right, so next week, um, I just launched a new pattern um, and it's a laundry basket. Uh, I, I love this pattern. I don't have one here. I don't know why I don't have one here because I keep giving them away. But um, I'll be cutting one and sewing one and I'm gonna be using some fabric I got through my Minerva um, ambassador thing. I'll show you what I got. I can't remember. Oh yeah, I found a new lining for it. I don't even have a picture of the pattern here, sorry. I'll put a link to it. I can do that. <laughs> I can show it to you. I even made a trailer. 
<laughs> which is really funny to me. I'm always looking for funny little things to make a video of. Well, I'm not, I shouldn't say that. I don't have the time. I have a billion ideas and I just don't have the time, so. I'll pull it up for you. No, I don't want to sign up on your frauding newsletter, lady. Okay, here we go. So this is the laundry basket. You can check it out if you want. It's only $6, um, fully illustrated. It's cut to measure all the pattern pieces you could do with a ruler. They're very straight. And you need about a yard and a half of the outer fabric and about a yard of the lining and a little bit of stiffener if you want. I only put it along the top edge to keep the basket open and on the bottom. It's got a flat bottom, so if you fold your laundry, you can put stuff in there. And it, it was designed to mimic a basket, but one that you could zip shut, one that hooks onto the dryer. So if you're like me and you have a stacking dryer, it's really nice that you can just hook it there and you don't have to try and hold it open, you know? Uh, and uh, what's the other thing? It has a pocket inside, but that's just, a uh, convenience thing and also you can drop the hook in there so it's not grabbing your stuff so I'm using this interesting fabric I got as far, part of my Minerva ambassador I got to pick out I didn't know what it said but you guys can read it I couldn't read it because I was too close it says there's like reuse and renew and and then gobbledygook I think uh, and then the lining I got is uh, is really cute I was just gonna get this solid canvas from Waywack because it's really affordable. If you want just like that, like muslin canvas look, they have it at Waywag and it's dirt cheap. And you could probably make the whole thing lined and outer for $10 in fabric, I'm pretty sure. Cause you get, it's like two and a half yards and it's really wide. It can hang on the wall. Yeah, I'll show you the optional little a loop that I created to hang on the wall flat. So if you have a tight space, um, and the lining I ended up picking, so I found it, I stumbled upon it at Hearts, is really cute. It's got, I think I got it from Hearts, and it's like little tree forts and things. I just couldn't resist it, so. Yeah. So the mysteries are solved. Yeah, <laughs> right, exactly. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna be making that on Wednesday. I'm gonna cut that out. Thursday, I'm gonna sew it up. And then those will act as videos for folks that get the pattern. Usually you get a video with the pattern, but I'm just in doing a live stream of it. I have a video almost done being edited and it's just, it's just too much for this. So thanks Ray. Yeah. Thanks Terry. I'm glad. Yeah. I, I decided I'm going to try and make trailers for some of my patterns. Like I really hardly sell any, you know, I sold a lot of the chicken boots ones when they all launched, but that, you know, I don't really push my patterns. I more and more I'm thinking I'm just gonna get rid of all my patterns and just do YouTube, not even have a website. That sounds so great, <laughs> not having a website. Like the idea of not having a website, ooh. And just treating my YouTube videos as the post and I could put the information in there. Very tempting, very tempting. So tempting. <laughs> yeah so um that's next week and then saturday i'm gonna cut out the blazer and we'll start sewing it very gently and let's see you know we we may let's okay i think we could cut it and maybe interface our pieces next week we'll at least talk about it that way we're not we can sew the following week and the first thing we're gonna do is our, pretty much sew our welt pockets. It's like, we're not, we're diving right in. So yeah, we're gonna do the welt pockets first. We're gonna practice too. So don't worry about it, right? Don't worry about it. It's a good idea just to practice. I always do. I almost always um, practice somebody's welt pocket because every designer designs it differently. And so I like to practice on it and make sure, because it is kind of one of those anxiety inducing pieces because you're cutting a hole directly in the middle of your, your project. 
There are easier ways to go about doing a welt. You can skip it. You can even just put interior pockets. You don't even have to do a welt pocket. You could put a flap on the front. No one will know that there's no pocket under there, all right? <laughs> like there's ways to get past this and not worry about it. You could do the little flap on there and then maybe five years from now, when you're like feeling it, you pop open that blazer and you put the welt pocket in. It's never too late. You start to the bound. I think I'm gonna try the bound buttonhole too. I've never done one before. I'm kind of, I'm like, am I, oh, let's see. I've never done a bound buttonhole. <laughs> and then after the laundry basket week, I'll show you my calendar real quick. Um, you guys don't know, here we go. I'm doing, oh, I'm doing the glissando pants by Love Notions. That was a $5 Friday pattern, so I picked it up. And then after that, we're doing so much this month. I still have four more projects to sew this month. The Piper Boho Tunic by Wardrobe by Me, which she sent me to sew for you guys. And the um, lastly, the Kids Hide Jacket, which is just basically a zip hoodie by five out of four patterns. I'm, gonna, I'm an ambassador for them now, so I get the patterns for free. And soon I will have an ambassador link for you, but I don't really, affiliate link, but don't worry about it. It is first time for you too? Okay, well, give me all your tips, Terry. <laughs> I, you know, I, this today my hair, I wanted it to be like as natural as possible and it just looks like a crazy, it looks like a witch's broom. <laughs> all right. I think that's it. So thanks for coming. Thanks for stopping by, you guys. I really appreciate it. And um, I'm really excited. I'm feeling really good about the blazer right now. There's a lot of weeks this month. You know what? I think I might go get myself something pumpkin-y right now. It's feeling like fall. Oh, yes. You know, we need a... Um... Yeah, so if you are doing the blazer and you're not on the Facebook group, it's a very gentle Facebook group. Please feel free. I think let's, don't I have an exclamation point social? Let's see. I should teach the mods how to do some of these. Is that it? I don't know. What are, what are my commands? Oh, we'll do this. Commands, let's see what they are. Hello. <laughs> Come on, baby. Oh, nice, Nancy. That's a cute blazer. Very exciting. Pumpkin cream cold brew. That's right. Okay. Okay, so wait, wait, wait. That's something I order, right, Susie? I order that. It's not like in a can. Oh, here we go. Okay. Machine, noise, phoenix, schedule, back tag, lint, lava, all, drink, socials. Okay. I forgot the S. Here we go. Let's hope that the Facebook group is in there. Yeah, oh, thanks, Lydia. That's awesome. You bought it? Awesome. I figure it's such a unique project, but I have to tell you, I'm not kidding. I'm not trying to sell my pattern. It's, it's actually been great. My husband loves it, too. He's like, this is just easier. It's so nice being able to use it. There we go. Okay, so um, I do not stream on both Twitch and YouTube anymore, sadly. So, so, so is facebook.com slow, so live. Yeah, so you can join the group. It's very chill. It's also a really great place to crowdsource information. If you're like, I have this fabric, I want this pattern, or I'm a H cup. What do you guys got for me in tank tops? You know what I mean? So folks, you know, will help you out. And I have to admit, like, I'm a, like right now, I, since I'm in that five out of four pattern of ambassador group, I am a little overwhelmed with uh, stuff right now. I'm trying to just find the so-so stuff and it's been hard. So <laughs> that was so spontaneous, Nancy. I actually had my camera on a tripod and I filmed me doing it and both dogs follow, they follow me everywhere, right? And Loki especially, and he's just like this little floppy lump, his little pug, you know, going up the stairs. And then when my husband was walking by, I was like, here, will you walk up the stairs with this? He's all, 
sure. And he walked up and I filmed him. And then um, he walked back down and I heard Molly starting to come with him. So I pressed pl uh, record and she looked so excited. <laughs> it was so cute. Yeah, he was my fit model. He was my model. He's literally in his pajamas. <laughs> He's such a good sport. I don't really involve him in much, so I like that kind of stuff. I don't burden him with that. I need to get pictures of him with those men's clothes that I made for him though. So, all right, I'll see you guys on Wednesday if you guys wanna stop by and cut out the laundry basket with me. And then on uh, Thursday, I can't wait to show you the lining fabric. I think it's gonna be really cute. Cause what I got to go with this was those hands. I made the peppermint Paddington top and that didn't work with it. So both dogs and hubs right now, exactly. I just love that Molly made an appearance and she was just like smiling as she came down the stairs. This <laughs> is so funny. I was like, oh, I'm gonna use that one. <laughs> yeah, you like it, Amy? Isn't it cute? It's pretty funny. I don't know, when are their new episodes? I'm watching that one and the um, Nine Strangers. So that Nine Strangers one, the author of that is the one I've mentioned to you guys before, Leanne Moriarty. I really have liked all of her books. It's interesting that of course, the two things they've made movies and videos of hers, or their series, or really series, are the ones that are the most drama llama. You know what I mean? And they make them look drama llama. So, I hadn't read either of those books, weirdly. Oh, I had read actually the um, Big Little Lies one. I had read that and it was a little different in the series. No, I'm not saying it in a bad way, but I don't, I don't wanna give anything away. But um, yeah, I like them because they're very much about human people, you know. Tuesdays, thank you. Shoot. I don't want to wait that long. That show is so cute. Are you caught up? Like Sting is in it. Sting is in that show. <laughs> it's so quirky. You've got Steve Martin, Martin Short, Selena Gomez, and Sting so far. So weird. And Nathan Lane, I think. Anyway, I hardly watch any TV, but I'm really enjoying those. Like I've been trying to find things to watch more. So, all right, you guys. Have a great weekend. Pumpkin cold brew, right? Pumpkin cream cold brew. Okay. All right, Susie. <laughs> I'll do it. All right, you guys. Uh, I'll see you guys on Wednesday. Have a great weekend and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.